They may be small in stature, yet they display great strength, dedication, commitment and athleticism on a daily basis. These men and women sacrifice a great deal that we all take for granted to excel at their craft. They have strict diets, fitness regimes, early mornings, excessive travel, and sometimes the margin between success and failure can be a matter of inches. This documentary is a dedication to them, their hard work, and to show everyone what it is like to live like a jockey. Here is the jockey room attendant. Tend to uh, the jockeys and all their um, all their wants and needs. Uh, we accept uh, all the colours off the trainers, um, then give them to the jockey. We put the colours over the uh, chair of the jockey for the upcoming race. Uh, we collect the colours at the end of the race, put them in the trainer's bag, and then we uh, leave the uh, bag at the door or deliver them back to the trainer or, or whatever the uh, the case may be. Okay. And do you have to keep any of the jockeys in check these days? Uh, no, not these days. I think you'll find that they're a very good bunch of uh, guys. Very, there's a lot of com camaraderie amongst a lot of them. Uh, they get on very, very well. Even if there's an incident in the race, more often than not, there's an apology coming by uh, from one jockey to another. I find it quite astounding that they're in a competitive uh, environment and uh, they get on so well together here. And what facilities do the jockeys have here on hand? Uh, the facilities here, they have spas outside. Uh, they, do ha they don't have saunas anymore. There was an issue with them some uh, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, they have meals, they have lounges. Uh, some, of the, some of the jockeys' rooms have, oh, they all have a quiet room whereby the jockey can go and uh, lay down, have a bit of a snooze. Uh, they, a lot of them get up early in the day and continually work uh, through the day and they like to have that little bit of rest time in between races. Especially the uh, jockeys that might have a ride in race one and race five, race six, race seven. Uh, they'll lay down, they'll say give us a call at uh, such and such a time and uh, we do uh, do that as well. Uh, what they've just introduced here is an ice bath. 
Um, we sometimes fill up a tub here, but the Jockers Association, along with the ATC, have uh, got a couple of ice baths. Uh, we fill it up with water, fill it up with ice. The guys, when they have a uh, spa here, they jump into the ice bath almost straight away. I don't know how they do it. But uh, just for about 30 seconds, to, uh, 30 seconds, just to refresh themselves, back into the sauna, back into the ice bath. That's, that's about the newest innovation they've got here in, uh, in the actual job. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank uh, my you. pleasure. When it comes to race day, how early do you get the race and what you do in setting up? Um, standard is we've got to be here like an hour before the first. So um, I usually try and get here about an hour before the first, um, set my gear up. Um, obviously weight's got to be on target, do a bit of form. Um, I think we weigh out about 35 minutes before the race. So we go out and talk to the air trainer when we hand the saddle over. Um, might go through a few little instructions, but um, yeah, once we weigh out, we get a call 15 minutes before the start. Uh, we come out here, go to the enclosure, and we, we mount up. Now you've got three rides today. Sirius Hoffer for Jason Beamer, Tars in for John Simpson, uh, John Thompson, and Eastern Legend for Liz Bridges. Yep. What are you expecting of your day today? Um, probably the first one's probably my best ride. Um, fit horse, um, 2,700 metre race. So that will make sure I'm nice and fit for that one. Uh, usually your first ride's the blowout, and you sort of continue on through the day. It gets a little bit easier, but um, yeah, I think he's fit. He drops in. Um, he's carrying less weight than what he did last start, and he meets a couple of horses. Is, um, better at the weights today. Now you've had a tick over 700 drives last season. How do you maintain your concentration and skills every single day? Yeah, I just try not to, um, I always try and get to the races with my weight on target. I don't like losing too much on the day. I think that's a big start. Um, and then obviously doing your form. You know, when people are booking you for a horse, um, they're expecting you to perform at your best. So I like to try and deliver that. I know a lot of jockeys now are doing meditation and yoga. Is that something that you're starting to get into? Nah, not really. Um, my routine is um, usually at home with the girls in the morning, get Lexi off to school. I'll come home, I'll have a little bit of a sweat and um, go through the form, etc. And yeah, get in the car, I'll usually talk to my manager a couple of times a day. And, um, yeah, get the races and it all starts. Now, dealing with owners, part and parcel of the game, time. Um, they spend big dollars at times to take one horse to the race. Yep. Is it hard fronting them after a, a race when it hasn't gone to plan? It obviously is disappointing. If I've made a few errors, it's all, I'm pretty hard on myself. I'll be straight up with the owners and trainers and um, let them know what I did and didn't do wrong. And um, I think it's the best way to be. Uh, they obviously... Smart group of knowing the racing game, really being in the racing game enough to own horses, they, they know how to read a race. So, you know, if you've done something wrong, you're better off being straight up and honest about it. And Barrier blank had been fitted on well about myself than anyone else behind the so. starting well, gates. As you just said, knowing more about the horse, um, dealing with, say, the trainers, do they take your advice when you think the horse should be ridden a certain way from something you may have learnt from track work? Yeah, you've, you've got your relationship with um, trainers, so they tend to, you know, if you can work with a trainer, it definitely helps. Um, they would know the horse a bit better than I would, uh, so I like to take their advice a lot of the time and take in as much as I can, and after the race, I give them feedback for what I think might need to change or what the horse did wrong and try and help that next time. Now, on the track, you're against every single jockey out there. Yep. What's the friendship like back in the room? Are you all friends once you are back in there? Yeah, listen, there's, you know, I've got my relationship with some of the boys that are very close, and, you know, some people you don't get along with 100%, but, you know, that's, I'm sure it's in every sport, but um, we all tend to get along quite well, and um, out in the race, we're very competitive. Um, you know, first couple of minutes after a race, if we come back in, we might give each other a decent spray or whatnot, but um, yeah, we tend to get over it eventually, and yeah, we, um, we're all good mates, really. Now, what's more important, uh, riding a race to suit the speed the of the race or riding the race to suit the style uh, of the horse? Yeah. I think it's a bit of both, really. Um, you know, you, you can't ride your horse out of its comfort zone and expect it to perform in its best. And, you know, a race has got to be run to suit your horse. So, a little bit of both, throw it in the middle, mix it up. Now, the, the rewards are very high in this game, and the lows can also be very low. What are some of the injuries that you've had? Yeah. Um, broken my shoulder, uh, broken neck of the humerus in a fall in Hong Kong and fractured my leg as well at the same time. Um, tore a couple ligaments in my shoulder, a fall here that I had a canter, so touch wood I've been quite lucky, uh, but um, yeah, listen, there's 
when you do go down, it's always pretty nasty. And if anyone can come out of a fall uninjured, it's a now. huge result. The first now, last one, the it's hard to come back from a, a long layoff. It's almost like having to prove yourself all over again. The yeah, are it, it is, forward. to an extent. Um, you obviously got to get back into it and perform to your best because been, um, the competition in Sydney is up there behind pretty the hard. Gates. Um, you've got world-class riders here and the, the, the field sizes aren't favorite. too big. And um, up yeah, it's all about getting the right now, horse at the right time. So, uh, it's a so tough Mariska game, it's enjoyable, the gates. but um, there's a lot of hard work. Do you have serious hopper today? How did you go about booking Ty England? Uh, well, most days now you book them, they all got uh, jockey managers, and um, yeah, that's how I booked Ty for today, yeah, for his manager. So was booking a Metropolitan jockey a big factor in today, compared to, say, one of your country provincial jockeys? Yeah, it is quite a big factor. You know, this is where they ride every day of the week. This is their home track, so yeah, it is a bit of a big factor, yeah. Will you be giving Ty any specific constructions today? Um, well, most jockeys now, they all watch the replays, they know how every horse races, where horses will be during the run, so I will give him some instructions, but you know, at the end of the day, Ty is a very good jockey and he, he um, will ride it the best way. What do you find are the key differences between, say, a senior Metropolitan jockey compared to the provincial jockeys? Um, well, you know, obviously these boys are riding here every day for a reason, they are some of the, we've got some of the best jockeys in Australia, if not the world here, and Ty's obviously one of them as well, so, you know, it's a big factor. Now, as an ex-jockey yourself, are you a bit more critical on their rides these days? Oh, I probably used to be, but I'm a bit more relaxed now. You know, I understand, you know, things can happen out there, which, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. You've got to make that split-second decision, so, you know, yep. no. Now, as an ex-jockey, how did the transition go from being a jockey to a trainer once you left the saddle? Um, oh, I wasn't too bad. I just rode work for a while once I got too heavy to ride in races, and, and the opportunity came to, to take up training, and I, I've gone on from then. Okay, and now the apprentices today, they've got Racing New South Wales Industry Training Department helping them out along the way, which is great for the industry. Would that have been something that would have been beneficial to the jockeys back in your day? Yes, yeah, so, um, would have been beneficial, but also these days um, the apprentices can get uh, sidetracked. You know, I've done it bring up, but drugs are a big problem in the industry and uh, you know, everywhere these days, so you know, they need all the help they can to be um, led in the right direction. Thank you. He's pretty forward, isn't he? Just yeah. Um, being the first half, yeah. probably sit outside yeah, the leader. Speed, I think Cathy Singh might roll along and lead, right. yeah. but if not... Yeah, well you're drawing yeah. out wide things. Yeah. Take your time, but... Yeah, uh, if he can yeah, lead. No, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Get him out and get his mind on the job back too, otherwise you come out and just wait yep. on and you just... Yeah, sure. Fight along. Fall asleep. Yeah, when he um, when went to Gossip, he got a good bit of a rev up. Yeah, yep. not too much, but yeah. Yep. Got his mind on the job, got him rolling, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So that ain't going fast enough for him. Yeah. Don't be afraid yeah. to go to the front. No, nah, sure. Leave it up to you. Yeah. Looks well. Yeah. yeah. Very good. He's yeah. a bit like Dane Carlaw, but he looks like Tarzan plays like James up top. He's hard. Nah, he's going good. But yeah. Yeah. His head's going all right. He's not your comeback, but. Well, at least no. we know he's dropping in weight what he's carrying yeah. compared to last start. Yeah, he's sinking it down towards you. He's fit. Last time, yeah. Yeah. So they're all in now. Light is on. The third here at Canterbury, 2,700 metres, and they're on their way in. Zero to ten was the first out from Sirius Hoffer. Four Carrots got enough toe there to sit in third in the early stages, followed by Ashcand in fourth. They're followed then by Napoleon, who sits up on the outside of Red Dreamer. A couple further back to Zafina and Stormon is the last one. Zero to ten is going to make the running in the early stages, out by a length to Sirius Hoffer. And four carat plonks in third on the inside of Ashcan. They wanted to try and lead today, but Ashcan's got to sit with cover in fourth. A couple further back to Napoleon, who sits on the outside of Red Dreamer. And the last two is Athena and Storm On. So there'd be about six or seven lengths from first to last. And zero to ten with a soft lead by a length on Sirius Hopper. Now Bowman's pulling out here on Ashcan. It looks as though he's going to make a move in the straight here on Ashcan. Four characters sits behind them in fourth as Ashcan does get going. They're followed then in the white blinkers to Napoleon on the outside of Red Dreamer. And the last two, Zafina and Storm on as they come down to the judges' box in this 2700 meter event for the stay. Zero to ten, under a decent grip. Ashcan is slowly rolling around the outside. Hasn't cleared serious hopper as yet, but it will in a moment. And four carat McAvoy's got it right on the back of the speed, the race favourite. Then came Napoleon, one off the fence, and the white jack on the outside of Red Dream. The pair got a bit tight there. Further back, the Storm on and Zafina is the last one. They work towards the back now at the 1300 metres, zero to ten in front. Now Ashcan has finally got to a clear second, but it took a while to get there. 
four carriers probing the fence in third on the inside of Sirius Hopper. Then came Red Dream, Napoleon's tugging pretty hard back in the field, and the last two, Zafina and Storm on. So they work to the 1,000 metre mark now, and it's zero to 10 on top from Ashcan. It took it a good 400 metres to get to second. Four carat in third, a length for the back to Sirius Hopper. Then came Red Dream from Napoleon, a length and a half further back to Zafina, and Stormond's had enough as they work to the far section of the course. Zero to ten, trying to make all well in the market today. Ashcan's come off the bridle in second. Four carat McAvoy still got a good grip on the favourite in third. Then Sirius Hopper from Red Dream, Napoleon is starting to get going, pulling to the outside, and three further back to Zafina, coming to the turn, zero to ten in front. Four carats at a soft run behind it, and now four carat pulls out. Sirius Hopper bats on on the outside, further back to Napoleon. Forget about it, Shan. Red Dream's running a cheeky race, going up the fence as Sirius Hopper lays in a bit, races to an air lead. Napoleon the outside, Red Dream up the fence. Four carat can't get there. Red Dream's going to Sirius Hopper, and Red Dream with structure on the inside, and Red Dream draws away to beat Sirius Hopper. Four carat a few lengths away in third. Photo for four, zero to ten, and Napoleon. Ash can drop right off from Zafina. How'd that go, Yeah, it was good. Um, worked out how I thought it would, but um, hit the front, furlong out. Um, when they had the soft run up, the inside got through and won, so my horse went super. As one of the more senior riders in the ranks, do you find it harder to get rides these days over some of the young guns coming through? Oh yes, for sure. You know, there's so many competitive jockeys and so many good jockeys, and there's a lot of not, a lot young kids coming through, going through their ranks. But um, yeah, I suppose Australia is probably the um, toughest place to ride in the world for sure. Yeah. Now, do the younger jockeys have a lot easier these days coming through the ranks compared to when you did your apprenticeship? Oh, well, you say they, you know, they don't probably have to do the same same stable work that we had to do and the same sort of horse um, work that we had to do. But um, they ride, you know, six days a week, seven days a week. So I wouldn't say it's easier, but. Um, like stable wise, it probably is, but um, riding wise, no, no, it's pretty, um, pretty he hectic for the young guys these days. Okay, and what keeps you motivated to find that next winner? Just riding. I love riding. Love being um, in racing. Love horses. So if I think if you've got that passion, you know, you're a long way in front. And do you feel as a senior jockey that you have that responsibility to help mentor the younger people coming through? Oh, for sure. You know, um, you're always there for, you know, if you needed, you know, if they need advice and um, need a bit of a, you know. A bit of a talk between races and things like that, but um, yeah, for sure, I think um, that's our job, and I think that's just the way it is. Sensational, thank you very uh, much. So, Ty, you know, the horse, um, you know, going back to old pace, yep. it's been more positive out of the barriers. You know, we were first up, he ran well, yep. uh, second up from a wide barrier, we tried to ride him a bit negative, and obviously didn't work out. So, yep. today we'll, we'll be more positive and just let him roll forward yep. wherever you can, where you said 1 1 would be yep. ideal. Yep. Um, <coughs> Play it by ear, work sure. out where you're yeah. happy travelling. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought, of course, it's drawn directly outside, it's, it's probably the leader. Yeah. He can take us across into the perfect spot. Perfect. He wants to go around and whatnot. So. He's mad, can't make him do some work. Yeah, yeah. 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 It depends on who's being away. Yeah, sure. Good to see you, mate. Sure. Yeah. So you might be 3D for that first turn. Yeah. Just roll over. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big horse. It doesn't matter if you're outside the leader. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way you're getting in there. Yeah, sure. On the job. Yeah, how do you, what do you think of the opposition? Oh, I think it's an even race, there's no standouts. But if he goes back to performing at his best, you know, he's got the ability, it's all just a, probably mentally upstairs with him, that's all it's been. Yeah. Looks good. Looks beautiful. He's in good shape, yeah. 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 It just wasn't the go the other day. Yep. Uh, was, yeah. Steadied up the race, went very slow mid sections and yep. then sprinted. Yeah. <coughs> Stand by. Fig tree lunged at the gates. Stand by, they're off and racing, and the favourite Nocio was one of the first into stride. Abdullah looking for the early lead, but no pushovers moving up. There's plenty of speed wide out. Virgilio very deep with Fortensky, and they're really making a beeline to go forward and the rail. So Virgilio leads from Fortensky. Tarsin pushes on into third, no pushover, settles fourth. Then came Get Up Strop further back to Midnight Delight. Nocio, who settles now in the second half of the field. Couple further back to Fantasize from Fig Tree, and Bracer sits back last about 
eight lengths off the leader, which is Virgilio at the 9.50 by a length on Fortensky. Tarsin goes to third, just shading no pushover. Then came No Show as pinned away on the fence by Get Up Strop. Length and a half then to Fig Tree on the inside of Midnight Delight. Second last is Braces and Fantasize is the last one. Well, Tarsin gets going. England pushes on on Tarsin to really put the pressure on Virgilio. Fortensky just eased back a bit into third. No pushover has got an opportunity to come off the fence now if it wants to. Further back to Nocio, get up, drop, and Midnight Delight heads the rest. Coming to the turn, Virgilio trying to beat off Tarsin who had a shot at it in mid-race. Fortensky moves up three wide. No pushover, four wide, and Nocio's looking for a run behind them. Enter the straight now, and Fortensky moves up three deep. Nocio behind them, ran into a dead end. Fortensky takes the lead. Now Nocio's into the clear. Fortensky in front, but Nocio's coming quickly. Nocio goes to Fortensky. Midnight Delight goes to third, but Nocio edges clear. And Nocio drew on to win it by a half length to Fortensky. Midnight Delight third. Braces closed off just in front of Tarsina. Further back to no pushover. Of course. Um, listen, the race sort of we fell into a good position from, from the start around the first corner. But the horse outside the leader just kept sort of coming back into my lap. He's a big, strong horse. I didn't want to expose him early like yeah. I did, but because he was coming back in my face, I was losing my spot by dragging him back. I let him stride around um, a little bit earlier than what I would, just because such he's, a big, he's such a big horse. So he did a good job to finish where he did. As a young female in the jockey ranks, do you find it hard to get rides against the men? Um, I wouldn't say because I wouldn't say because I'm a girl. Um, I find it hard to get the opportunities. I think the opportunities come just depending on you, more your situation and uh, where you are, where you're at. Because I've I've noticed even when I, when I was you know go, going well at the uh, lead, lead, leading the apprenticeships probably last last year mid last year um, I was getting a lot of the opportunities and I was, I was getting a nice roll on and I've noticed. I noticed I was even on the top of uh, on the top of the list of, of the, the male riders. So I think it's just more where you are, where you're working, and the connections. I think that's more what it is. Well, let me say, a very well spoken young lady. Is media training something that you all do now? Is that part of the game? Ah, uh, yeah. At apprentice school, we do get some media training, I suppose. But the more interviews you do, you know, the better you get. So. Okay. Now there are a lot of young female jockeys coming through the ranks, which is great for racing. And what qualities or attributes do the women have over the men in riding? Uh, I think, uh, again, I think that's more a jockey thing. Like, jockeys are very complex. Uh, we've got, jockeys have got a lot of ability. Um, I wouldn't say ladies have one thing over, over men. Uh, and men, I wouldn't say men have any one thing more over women either. I mean, I know that men are naturally, naturally stronger, but that doesn't mean they're going to be better jockeys. But I think, you know, just how the individual jockey themselves will, uh, you know, read, read the horse and and just more more experience of, of riding. And because it's only lately that uh, female jockeys are coming through, I think it was, it's more because they see a female jockey come through. They want to. They 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 know it gives it gives the other female jockeys more assur more assurance saying it's okay and, and you know it's it's going to be fair. We're going we're going to get a go as well. So. It's only because it's a, it's more a, a social, a social and cultural image that it was a male-dominated sport. But you go back a fair few years and and compare it from then and now, it's always um, it's always advanced and uh, it's it's continually improving all the time. So I wouldn't say that it's unfair, unfair, but it's getting better. Who is your role model in the jockey ranks? Um, well, just uh, you, sorry, not you, one. You try to style, yep. model your style on someone, or a bit of everybody. Yeah, yeah, a bit of everybody. Like, uh, let's say, like Hugh, say, say Hugh Bowen. His his tactics is just very smart, very intelligent sort of a jockey. And I couldn't mold myself to him, obviously, because he's very tall and he's got longer limbs than I have. But I like uh, the look of Jason Collett mm -hmm. and the aggressiveness of Brenton Abdullah. So I I, ha I have a look at a fair few. And uh, what would you say to any young girl looking to become a jockey? Um, yeah, just just go for it. Don't be scared. Don't let the boys intimidate you. Um, you know, we're, the boys will ask any of the jockeys. They will give you advice and help whenever you like. Just don't don't feel don't feel that it's a boy boy or girl thing. Just be a jockey. That's what you're here for to do to do, to do your work and job as a jockey. And mind your mind your own sort of sort of business. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.
You're one of the top jockeys in New South Wales and Australia for that matter. Do you feel the pressure to perform all the time, although it's almost expected you're always going to win? Yeah, look, it's probably, uh, it's got to a point now where you're sort of used to it. Um, look, during the carnival you get a few sleepless nights when you're on short price favourites in the big races, but, um, but it's something I've probably come accustomed to now when you ride for the big trainers and um, obviously ride the big good horses and uh, it's just something that comes with it. Um, I think a big stepping stone for me was when I won on Isle of the City. I won the Randwick Guineas on him as a short price favourite and it um, didn't sleep for the whole week. But uh, up until then, when you, you, know, you get the confidence that you can get the job done. Um, and then when he won, it just gave me plenty of confidence from then on. And now I can go to the big races and you, uh, yeah, you, you prep yourself well. And you, you, you know, obviously there's an expectation for you to get the job done. But um, it's just sort of when those barriers open, everything, everything else goes out the window and you can focus on your job. Now, you're one of the more well-spoken and knowledgeable jockeys when it comes to dealing with both trainers and owners. Do you see that as an added string to your bow? Yeah, look, uh, racing's probably changed a lot over the sort of, even since when I started, um, eight, eight, nine years ago. So, uh, look, now you've sort of got to prep yourself and obviously uh, you've got to know what horses you're riding and obviously the form around you. And it does make it easier when you can communicate properly with um, owners and trainers. It's, uh, look, even, you know, you see this day and age now with so much social media and if you can promote yourself in any way, it's obviously going to be a bonus. Now, being a leading how often do you still have to get track work? Uh, I'm doing track work sort of two or three mornings a week at the moment. Um, all can change. Some mornings, uh, sometimes, you know, when it's a full racing schedule and full trials, you know, I won't do much at all. And it just depends on uh, what weight I've got to do. If I've got to ride really light, I, I back off the track work and more, more, do more of the training. So, um, look, at the moment, I'm probably here yeah, two, three days a week and uh, just go where I cried. I'm, I'm sort of just riding for uh, Team Hawks now at the moment. And, you know, when you're, wherever you're getting your opportunities, that's where you're happy to base your work. Now, all the jockeys rate is the biggest larrick in the room. Does humour help break the tension and the stresses of the day? I suppose so. Um, definitely, probably, yeah, definitely probably the loudest in the room and don't take much too seriously. But, yeah, look, we're all pretty close. Uh, at the end of the day, we all put each other's lives in each other's hands. So mm -hmm. we're, we're a pretty tight-knit um, community there. But, yeah, if it's uh, I'm the first one to pot someone in the room or whatever and just try and get a bit of a uh, spark going. But, yeah, like I said, we're all mates at heart and, um, look, we're all out there doing the same thing. So what drives you? Group 1 wins or Metropolitan titles? Group one wins for sure. Um, look, last season wasn't about sort of right trying to win a title. It was just more about uh, trying to be consistent, and it sort of put me to a spot where I was in contention. But uh, look, you can't can't get away from the big days where you're riding group one horses uh, in front of big crowds. And uh, yeah, look, the, the the VRC Oaks is pretty special for me in front of 100,000, and um, and you can win one of the big group ones on your home track. Very true. And what's the biggest? Oh, so, what's the best bit of advice you would give to a young apprentice starting out? Uh, don't do what I did, which is uh, not work. So uh, look, the biggest thing is probably work hard. Um, if you've got any ability, uh, it does make it easier. But I suppose you, I've seen I've seen kids who uh, look probably. I, I was the same. I couldn't sit on a horse before I was 15 years old. I put my head crown on a horse, and it took me a little bit of time. But uh, look, I think if you work hard and you're with the right stables and you're happy to learn, um, anything's possible. Um, yeah, just to try and balance him up. Yeah. Um, he has just since we galloped in, he's just really he's switched back on. So I've kept the same routine with him. Just really happy with him. And he like he doesn't pitch himself. Um obviously just it's not ideal, but we've got to deal with what we've we've got to deal with. He was like a flash on the track the other day. The two's on favourite Mallor had drawn the rails. Stand by. Racing favourite jump well. Mallor had off the inside. Wide out Bright Future sealed up with Surf and Safari, but Mallor had is right there as Bright Future is going to press on and lead. Uh, Professor Marks is driving into a forward spot just in front of Gorgan and then came Bravissimo. Midfield on the fence, Pure Rebel, a couple off to Intuary. Then came Rockefeller and the last two Eastern Legend and Cannon Runner going towards the 700 and Bright Futures now crossed to the rails to lead from Professor Marks and Malahat going through on the rails. A couple further back to Gorgan on the outside of Bravissimo. Surf and Safari's cast deep around Pure Rebel, then came Intuary. Back third last is Rockefeller from Cannon Run and Eastern Legend's sees them all. Bright Future and Professor Marks, the joint leaders at the 400. Just behind is the favourite Malahat, just easing out three deep as they turn and a length further back to Gorgan as they straighten up. It's Professor Marks, Bright Future, but Malahat's chiming in quickly now and Malahat quickly heads off Professor Marks and Bright Future. Further back to Bravis 
Samoan Rockefeller making ground, but Malahat has raced well clear inside the 50 metres with Rockefeller storming home at a second, but Malahat goes on to win it. Malahat from Rockefeller. Bright Future held on to third. Cannon runs run on well, and Pure Rebel making ground wide out. Further back to Bravissimo from Intuary. Gorgan was next, followed then by Eastern legend Professor Mark. He went all right. Um, he's a horse that had a fall two starts back, so he's lacking confidence at the moment. So the way we wanted to ride him was to get back, don't go between them, let him have a nice blowout. And I just had to do too much work around the corner to not, obviously I couldn't, didn't want to go through horses, so I had to make a long run, but he'll improve third up. Uh, give us a wrap on how today went. Yeah, well, listen, I was sort of how I thought it would pan out. Um, I didn't have any standout rides, but uh, the, my best ride ended up finishing second, so that was um, a good little result. Uh, I thought I was the winner at some stage of the race, but um, you know, that's racing. So, no, overall, pretty happy with the way it went. A few horses probably had a little bit of a stiff run, um, had to cover a little bit of ground around the corners, but their horses sort of, you know, their next two runs are going to be their best. So what do you do for the rest of the day now heading into tomorrow's trials? Um, tomorrow's trials, well, I'll sit in traffic for a couple of hours on the way home, um, you know, have dinner, see the girls, and um, trials, I sort of, once I get there in the morning, I usually get there a little bit early and go through my trials and have a look at the horses and where they're up to at their stage of the prep to know, you know, how I have to trial them, how far I can push them fitness-wise. So I mostly do that um, in the morning at the trials. And, um, yeah, tonight, go home, have a little bit of a light dinner and um, catch up with the family. And we'll see you at the trials tomorrow. Beautiful. See you, there. Thank you. You're one of the leading female riders in New South Wales. It wasn't an overnight success. Tell us about the story. Yeah, look, um, I've worked hard at it. I've been in Australia probably three and a half years now. Um, been apprenticed to Gay for that whole time. And look, I've, Gay was very keen for me to sort of start off in the country, um, work through the greys, country, provincial, and then to progress to the city. So I outrode my country claim and then worked through my provincial claim and, yeah, finally made it to the city grade now. Now, is it hard competing in a male dominated sport, or does that spur you on even more? Uh, look, I find here, especially compared to probably Europe, is a lot more, a lot more of a level playing field. Um, it, it probably does give you that little bit of a spur, definitely, just to sort of want to be, you know, on level terms with them. And it's it's a great sport because we do compete on level terms. You know, there's no separation there. Um, we're all sort of competing under the same same rules and everything. So, definitely gives you that little bit more of a spur, though, to be just as good as them and try and beat them. <laughs> Now, you're in a relationship with fellow jockey Blake Spriggs. Does it get very competitive between you guys? <laughs> uh, it does when we go into the race. Yeah, look, look, at the races, we're just as competitive as anyone else. But um, we're sort of quite, we're pretty good at, you know, leaving the races at the races. We're not, not sort of those couples that would have, have arguments or anything like that over a race. Um, but look, Blake's been a huge help to me. Like, he's, because he's been there and done it in Australia, it's been a big help having someone that's been apprentice. Um, and it's, you know, worked through the grades, so it, it's been really good actually having a lot of help. Now, what are your chores as an apprentice? Um, just daily normal sort of duties really, like I start at three o'clock in the morning, um, sort of either walk a couple of horses normally till about four, and then track work starts, and yeah, then most of the time off to the races for the day, so normal kind of stable hand sort of jobs, you know, a bit of everything, but a lot of it at, at Gazy is just a lot of track work. Um, we've got a lot of horses to work, so track work's pretty busy every morning. So you're riding with a lot of success at the moment. How do you keep yourself grounded at such a young age? Uh, look, I've had a bit of a sort of experience, obviously, back in England. Like I was riding for probably six years over there before I came here, only as an amateur, so I wasn't riding anywhere near as often. Um, but I guess having that behind me has definitely probably helped. You know, just like I, I've been able to sit back and watch um, watch other apprentices go through the ranks and probably learn a bit. You know, the good points and the bad points. So that's definitely helped. And working for Gaelic, she's not going to ever let you sort of get ahead of yourself and should definitely keep you grounded. 
I was talking again, she's had a huge influence on many great writers like Shin, Abdullah, Tommy Berry, to name a few. How has she helped you in your career? Oh, she's been a huge help. Like I said, she's guided me very much through through the system. Um, I was only allowed to, you know, go to the, to the country and provincial meetings when I first started here and work my way through through that um, system. And it, it's been a huge help because otherwise I could have got very lost and, you know, gone to the city too early, which you see a few fences do, and, and then it just doesn't work out. Um, and she's been a big help, you know, with getting other jockeys to help me, like you said, the mentioning the likes of sort of Tommy Berry and things, writing work with people like that is, is a huge help and Gay and Adrian have both been very much on my side through that. Have you, have you set yourself any goals for this season? Uh, I'd love to win the Metro Premiership, like I ran second in it last year and I only started riding in the city sort of, oh, over halfway through the season so to run second was, was huge and it was a big effort and hopefully with the support of Gay and Adrian this year I can try and win it. And who do you look up to in racing that gives you the any help along the way? Oh, look, there's a lot. we get a lot of help um, as being an apprentice. Like we, we have um, a kind of school every month and the Taste College help us. And we've got apprentice mentors um, that are always there to help. And just any of the good jockeys, to be honest, as well. They're always, you know, they're always very good. All the top boys here will, will always help you. If you need any help, you can always ask. Even on a Saturday, you know, they'll, they'll if you just want to look through a race or anything, they're always pretty happy to help. Stata has them. English had a bit of a dive at the gates. They're right now. They're away. English left well. Missing the start was Oklahoma Girl by a couple. Apart from that, it was a pretty level to spatch out. Takedowns going forward in the centre to take a narrow lead from prompt response. English and Daisy Doom are back close to the inside and then followed Japanese May Diamond Tathagata. In the red jacket with the green sleeves is Zenalicious, then Good Project, who's one of the widest runners. Tangled is next and four lengths away, Oklahoma Girl last. So it's a bit of a packing field bar, Oklahoma Girl at the home corner. 4.25 left the run. English has gone through to take the lead by about a head to Daisy Doom on its inner. A length away in third is take down, then prompt response, Zenalicious and Tangled. Next is Japanese May Diamond Tathagata, Good Project, Oklahoma Girl. English the leader at the furlong pole, leading by neck to Daisy Doom. Takedown's trying to run on out wider. English in front, Daisy Doom's going through on its inside. They come to the post and Daisy Doom's just beaten English, beat about, uh, about ahead in the end. Third in takedown, then followed prompt response, Zenalicious, Tangled and Good Project was doing its best work late. Japanese May, Diamond, Tathagata, and Oklahoma Girl. So trials. Yep. The main aim of the day? Um, education and fitness. Um, these older horses, obviously, they know what it's all about. It's sort of open their lungs up, getting them on the float, bringing them out here. Um, you know, it just brings them on. Um, the younger horses, all about education as well. Um, they have to pass their trials to be able to go to the races. So we bring them out here, put them in the gates, get them in amongst horses. Get them off the bride a little bit more than what they would um, at the track uh, during a gallop. So you just got to teach them to quicken, as if you know it's sort of treated as a little bit of a race, but don't open them up as much. So you just always got to save that little bit more for race day. But it's good education for the the younger horses.